Welcome to North Coast United Methodist Church. My name is Drew Davis. It is a blessing and a privilege to have you join us today. So, there's a joke that I like to make every time this time of year, and this year I need to resolve it a little differently. So I'm going to make the joke first, and then I'll resolve it a little differently. Uh, thank you for being here this morning. You have perfect attendance for the entire year. Good job. So now I need to resolve it for the world that we live in. And dear friends, there's other ways for you to, to join us if you don't feel well. Uh, my dear daughter, Annie, every week does our Zoom signal and the Zoom code is on our website. So if you don't feel well, you can see church on Zoom. Also, if you don't feel well, we do every week a specific YouTube worship service. It's one made specifically for YouTube. And you can watch the worship service on YouTube if you are not feeling well. As we continue to deal with Omicron, did I say it right? Yeah, uh, we need you, need you, need you to stay at home if you don't feel well. And to help you with that, we have the Zoom, we have the YouTube, we have a Tuesday YouTube. There is a podcast if you don't want to see me while you're hearing all this. So there's so many other options. Please, 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 until we get through this, take care of other people by taking care of yourself, please. But it's a blessing to have you here today. When I'm done speaking, I'll have my mask back on as well. Thank you for wearing your mask. And let's have a moment of centering music. No, how about I actually do the announcements too? We will have um, our Bible study Tuesday at 10 o'clock. Will, we will be going back to our uh, Jesus Calling book uh, for a few weeks until we get into the time of Lent. When we move into the Lent, we'll have the, uh, I think it's the Way of Christ or something. The, the title of the book escapes me right now, but it's another book by Dr. Adam Hamilton that we'll be doing through Lent. But from, from this uh, Tuesday until the beginning of Lent, we will go back to the Jesus Calling books and just have a time of prayer and meditation together. Uh, we will continue our Zoom Wednesday prayer time. So join us on the same Zoom signal that you join us for worship. And it's a time that we pray for each other. And, and again, we'll, we'll meet here social distance. We've got extra seating in the back that has more air. Extra seating in the fellowship hall that has more air. And, and please, if, please, if you do not feel well, join us electronically. We, I want you to take care of yourself so we can take care of others. Precious God, as we move into this new year, as we do everything possible to be present with you in worship and to be caregivers, active caregivers, guide us, God. Be the master instructor in all things. Raise your staff high for us in the new year so that we can see you and follow you. And help us both to point in ways that we can be connected to you. And even in some ways through disconnection, <laughs> care for our community. In your son's name I pray. Amen.
how it's doing our time with children and stuff, guys. You guys are still doing all the, the cool Christmas crafts that we had from last year. And today we are moving into, it's called a Epiphany. This is Epiphany Sunday. You know what the word Epiphany means? Epiphany is when you get like a really cool idea and you realize something. You ever, do they still in the cartoon, somebody realizes something and there's a light bulb that pops up on the top of their head when they figure things out? When, when I was a kid, they did that, Fred Flintstone or Bugs Bunny or somebody. It's when that we realize that something's important. So when I teach in a sermon today, they're all going to learn about the three kings and how the three kings came to acknowledge that Christ was a king and the leader of worship and the person who came to take care of something we couldn't take care of on our own. So we all were joking a little earlier about New Year's resolutions. And one of the things that people do for a New Year's resolution is if there's something that they want to learn about or something they want to have a better understanding about, something they want to have an epiphany about, they make it their focus for that year. So I pray for you guys, and you pray for me too, that the things that we pick for our New Year's resolutions this year will be things that help us learn and grow and have some cool epiphanies in 2022. Okay? Dear God, be with me as I follow you. Amen. Okay, you guys follow Mr. Pill for Sunday school. Let's join together in our call to prayer. God of starlight, dispense the darkness of our lives. Disperse the darkness of our lives. That we may behold the light of your love shining in every corner of the world. Guide our footsteps in the paths of righteousness, that justice may flourish and peace may abound. Amen. And as we continue in our attitude of prayer, let's join together in the words of the prayer that Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we continue in our time of prayer, let's hear the words of our prayer of affirmation. The power that brought light and salvation to the Gentiles is at work in the world today. Bring grace and mercy to us as we offer grace and mercy to others. The power of the living God transforms our hearts of stone and our feet of clay into hearts of joy and lives of justice and peace. Dear God, guide us through this year. Amen. At this time, we'll move into our time of Scripture. As our Scripture reading comes today from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi, from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all of the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. 
In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet had written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judea. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Thank you, God, for the inspiration of this word. Amen. Precious God, be with us today as we join into this reading, as we explore this path of the Magi, as we look at the proclamation of the identity of the baby in the manger, and as we explore the ways that we all become caregivers of the child, meek and wild, born in a manger, who grew to become our Lord and Savior. Be with us today, God. Again, Happy New, Happy New Year. Thank you. Welcome to Epiphany Sunday. The realization of who the baby is. Welcome to Epiphany Sunday. The journey taken by three to go and acknowledge not just the presence of God with us, not just the presence of the Messiah that had been long awaited, but within the best that they had, bringing gifts that proclaimed the, the path that God would take in flesh and the image of Jesus Christ. Thank you for being here today, whether it be here in this facility, online, on YouTube, on the audio podcast. As we listen to this journey, the three kings took to proclaim the identity of God with us and then to become protectors of the message. There's so much that's happening within this scripture Everything from a ruler being worried about losing power, being told that the new king would come. So frightened of what may come of this being that a decree is set out that's known as the massacre of the firstborns. An individual not willing to give up what he has become prosperous from frightened of what could be lost that through the guise of wanting to worship what is found he asked three caring hearts to bring back information that he could use for his own benefit that is happening in this narrative there's another thing that's happening within this narrative we see within the Magi individuals who want to become caregivers of a new reality. We see within three individuals taking what is the best of their country 
taking what is the best of their own gifts and taking it to acknowledge not just there is one who has come who would change things for the better, but there is one who has come who would be a king, a leader of worship, and the gift of life. We also see within these pure hearts a third story. Three individuals who become the protectors of a reality. The ones that hear the true message and the true gift and they do whatever possible it is to go forth so that the message can continue even that of going a different path so that this dear child, meek and mild, can be protected from the one who wants to maintain what they have. I would like to look at those three individual stories that are taking place today because within these three individual stories, within the three gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, we see the complete story of the being of God. The complete story of the being of Jesus Christ. And the epiphany that this baby will become far more than a child reaching out for the loving arms of his mother. Let's look at the gifts individually and tie them within the three narratives that are taking place in the scripture today. If you joined us for our Bible study, The Journey by Dr. Adam Hamilton, he talks about in this book what the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh actually represent. They're not just the best gifts from the countries in which that these kings, the Magi, come from, but they are also gifts that link in to the reality of who Jesus Christ would become. The first gift links, links into the first narrative. We see this king so frightened, afraid, of losing power because of who Christ is proclaimed he would become. The first gift of gold is something of a kingly nature, is something that only people of wealth and high priority would have in this time period. It's something that would only be held of people of predominance and importance. The first gift of gold points towards the kingly nature of who Jesus Christ would become. And as this king fears and worry of losing the power that he has, it's this gift of wealth that's presented to the child that shifts the meaning of what true wealth will be. Where the king is worried about losing power and strength and importance we begin to see in the birth of a child, meek and mild, that soon those that are considered the weakest will be the ones of the most importance. We see as this gift of gold, wealth, and value is laid at the feet of a child, it turns the tables over on what it means of being the most and as we hear from the child's own teachings as an adult, it's the least of these that have the most importance. And the more that we find ways to turn power over, it is through those ways that the reality of wealth has its most importance. This young child being bestowed the gifts of a king begins to set the example of the story that he will move forward. Being a voice for the lady at the well, turning the tables over in the temple. When the Samaritan woman comes and asks from her for a scrap from the table, he offers it. And he offers forgiveness to the one that denied him and made him the first representative of faith. The wealth 
of finding those that are displaced and misfortunate and giving them power and strength to live in it. I'm blessed of being a pastor in the United Methodist Church, at least the United Methodist Church that I joined. One that has always been on the constant search, in the words of John Wesley, to live every day in such a way that we do all the good we can, in all the ways we can, in all the means that we can, for all the people that we can, in every moment that we can, so that we continue to be what the gift of the Magi displays in the image of this child. The true wealth of adding and enriching and helping others find freedom as they move through the path of growing closer and closer and closer to the reality of the true King. Not the one holding for themselves to have the most, but the one who goes out so that others can have what they need. We're blessed here that we participate at North Coast United Methodist Church in this image of Jesus Christ. As we go the second Monday of every month to Brother Benno's to serve breakfast to our dear friends who need something to eat. As we continue to pray as a community and what our relationship with the Interfaith Shelter Network looks like and this being as we either are a shelter that provides housing or we work together to make it possible for hotels to be provided so that individuals can have housing. Even in the midst of the pandemic, there is ways to care for people so that they don't get sick and they have the things that they need. There's other journeys that are taking place as we, as I have for the last two months, been participating with the district youth um, coordination and having conversations with other youth directors throughout the South District to talk about what it will mean for North Coast United Methodist Church to intentionally provide programming for individuals from 7th to 12th grade and what it means to show for individuals that there is a place here for you. We continue through our relationship with the Reconciling Ministry Network to talk about what it means that no matter who we proclaim that we love, there's a place for us here. As I've been in conversations with the Oceanside LGBTQ advocacy program to find out what it means. For North Coast to be active. Lucky to escape me an odd man. <laughs> we live within this reality that is connected by the gift of gold to this baby. That power isn't for the powerful. Power is turning things over to those in need. Let's look at the second gift, the gift of frankincense. And if you were a part of the Bible study, yes, I did accidentally call this Frankenstein and I'm happy for it. <laughs> but this gift of frankincense that is an incense that is used for worship. If we look at this narrative as the three kings go to worship this baby, this gift shows the one that will become the peak of the pyramid, the one who will do the actions that set individuals free. The ones who go to a baby that is an image of weakness and need to say, we worship this. It's not the quest of power, but it's the ones that are willing to be vulnerable so that other individuals can find their strength. This gift of frankincense and the actions of the three wise men the Magi, worshiping the true leader of our faith. How do we do that? How do we go and we worship with our full hearts? 
It's happened so many times, and it's why that we participate with the groups that we outreach somewhere. Sometimes someone said, this is what is burdening my heart. Once upon a time, an individual said, there's this place, Brother Benno's, that provides food and clothing and care for those who are without housing. How can we be involved in that? When we begin to hear the beckoning of our hearts point the way to needs that need to be cared for, those are the moments that we begin to truly worship what needs to be worshiped. And when we truly begin to put time in things that need to have time given to them. When we hear the story in our hearts of who we don't see sitting around us and we try to make it possible to welcome them in and show them a place to join us. That's worship. The last I did not know about until I read Dr. Hamilton's book, The Myrrh. The myrrh being a spice. It was actually an item used for embalming. And we look at this gift of myrrh being presented to Christ, we see the complete story of Christ and the gold of the king who would rule in a new way and the frankincense, the one who would create a worship that is affirming and welcoming and open to all. And with the gift of myrrh, the Savior who has shared in the book of Philippians, would humble himself to the image of man, even to the point of death, to death on a cross. The complete image. But that reality of Christ's sacrifice begins to once again be lived within the actions of the Magi. They don't just sit within the benefit that comes to them from the care of this child. They immediately become active to care for the message so that it can grow. They receive the epiphany of what's actually going on. And when they realize what is actually happening, they don't go back to report to the king. They go out to live the message, to protect the message, and to make sure that the message is shared in such a way that the individuals that need to learn about the compassionate love of Jesus Christ will have that opportunity because that message will not end with them because of the journey they take afterwards. That's the hard part. We receive our epiphanies, but then we're challenged to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ to go out and live and to do and to transform. To go out and live and to do and to show actively what it means to care for the ones who God is sending us out to care for. Not the ones that reap benefits because of the title that we have, but realize that the title we have, the children of God, is a tool to use to go out and to touch the hearts of other people. As you pray today, the second day of the new year, what your epiphany will be for 2022, I want you to know that I know it comes with a responsibility. It comes with a responsibility of taking a chance. The wise men, the Magi, did not go back the easy way. They went back the hard way. And there's hard paths to take as caregivers. I want you to know that I know, as we look at this image of worship, what it means to be honest within our worship. 
to say the things that need to be heard and to practice the things that God is inspiring us to do so that we are not just worshiping for our good feelings, but to truly to be inspired to go out and live so that we can get back to that first gift, that we can look at the face of the king and say thank Thank you for caring for me for who I am, my flaws and all, my bruises and my scars. Thank you. Because the bruises and scars are the story that we share with other people. I'm going to end with a quote that I meant to start with. My favorite Presbyterian minister, Fred Rogers, once said, that at the end of every story is the beginning of another. We see this moment of epiphany being the ending of our Christmas journey. And we put the Christmas ornaments away. We put away all the banners. And we set it all aside until that Advent happens the next year. And that's what we do. But... I want to remind you where this story ends with epiphany is only the beginning of the greater story of just like the gifts going out to show people the true king, going out to worship the one that creates true worship and being the caregivers for the ones who one who took care of the one thing we could not take care of our own. And we're going to celebrate that action today. Today as we celebrate in Holy Communion, we celebrate the myrrh. We celebrate the reality that Christ came to be a living example of what faith is to be a living example of the actions of following our God as being servants for others through Christ's journey to the cross and the resurrection and freedom for one and all. So today, with our epiphany, we celebrate the one who loved us so much and came to set us free. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. You redeemed your scattered people in a path in which they did not stumble. And the young women rejoiced and danced, and the young men and old are merry. You turn mourning into joy and give gladness for sorrow. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. He is your word with you in the very beginning of all things. In him is life and the light is the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it. Your spirit anointed him to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people and heal the sick, feed the hungry, and you ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, 
and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. That Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ. <coughs> Excuse me. That we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. We are marked with the seal of the Holy Spirit and have received our inheritance of redemption. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at the heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Please receive the gifts of Jesus Christ.
Thank you.